It is the 22nd of April, I believe. Uh, 2.30 in the morning. I, uh, went with the flow and I got sleepy around 8 o'clock. And then woke up at 12.15. And then I read over something that was very upsetting to me. But first, let me pick this up and show you the blank spot over there. Where the big blue scooter used to be, I managed to get that out of here. And it was funny, and not funny, because I was worried about getting it through the doorway and maneuvering it around. And because uh, there's so little clearance, and uh, I got through the doorway on the first try. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the distance from my doorway to this fixed to the ground, literally fixed to the ground, can't move it, table. Uh, there's not, there wasn't enough clearance, so the front part of the scooter is still in the bedroom, and the back part of the scooter is banging against this table that my microwave is set on. So, um, I'm like, well, it's a pretty obvious solution here. And I just had a hat on my head, so I took the hat off my head, and I, to protect my hands and I lifted up the back of the scooter and like scooched it and uh, of course lost my balance while I was picking it up and uh, slammed like ass first into the refrigerator but it hit my tailbone and shot like a bolt of electricity up my spine like what happens when that happens I seem to be okay but I sat there on the ground and I don't, I don't think I did too much damage to my feet, but my feet don't talk to me uh, all that clearly, so I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, while I was sitting on the ground, I said, well, I almost got it. I only got like an inch to spare before I can work the back of the scooter around to where it's not bumping into the table. And then I can wheel the scooter out and then out into the living room area. All of which was probably unnecessary because... I could have had uh, people help me do it, but I like to do things myself. And um, I had spoke to my brother. My brother said that he had no trouble with uh, me storing it at his place. And then I can learn to ride it at his place once I figure out the acceleration on it. And um, he's got like a suburbs, rich people neighborhood. And people do not park on the side of the road. They all have nice little driveways. So I won't be running into any parked cars, maybe a lawn or two, if I lose control of it. Which is made to go off-road anyway. The guy that owned it before me just ran it around the campgrounds. He never even took it on the road. It was like in pristine shape before I slammed it into a parked car. But anyways, um, I talked to my friend and my friend asked my friend about moving it. And he was like, yeah, I can move it. And, uh, get it over to your brother's house he's like uh, I, I know this guy that's got like one of those trailers that you uh, put lawn mowers on that you see with you know like lawn crews he's like you can put it on that trailer and strap it down so everything's good to go there and um, that was later in the day and uh, the middle part of my day was taken up um, by uh uh, the aid worker, uh, and I got my medication back with, with my blood thinner, and that went well, because I got two refills on it, so I'm good for 90 days on, uh, blood thinner, and, um, the callback, I think, I think that was on my last video, there, I was like, ah, they're calling back to yell at me again, that was, uh, just setting up a referral, I think I already said that, though, I don't know. I'm kind of disoriented because I'm really, really angry right now because um, I got a hold of the uh, Stonehenge Apartments where I want to move, and it turns out they're racist, but it's poorest. It's poorism. It's not racism because uh, it says, like, it has, like, an opening part before you get to the information on the lease, and it says that uh, you have to have provable monthly income that's two and a half times the rent. 
which means if their cheapest apartment is five hundred and seventy dollars, uh, two and a half times that, I still wouldn't be able to live there if that's a hard and fast rule. Now this is stupid because I talked to her about leases and um, had a nice conversation with her, got all the information I thought I needed, was all positive and happy about it, even had to call somebody and tell them about it. And they said, hey, looks like I'm going to be living at some place I want to be living at. And I got further information about it, you know, it's like ideal for me. And, um, you know, and now if they stick to that guideline of you have to make two and a half times more of what the rent is to live there, I can't live there. And that's poorism because uh, I don't have any car payments to worry about. I don't live an extravagant lifestyle. I get, I don't have to pay for food except for I'll pay for like odds and ends of food here and there. And I've certainly lived on less, even if I, uh, yeah, I've certainly lived on less, um, what you would call disposable income than $400 a month. So that part of it, I don't understand. I don't understand if there's any way around it. I don't I will talk to the, the real estate agent guy that knows more about it. If there's any way that I can still get in there but right now, after reading that, I'm very, very upset because I didn't bother to read the lease because I had like a half an hour conversation with, um, her name's, uh, Valerie, uh, Booker, I believe. And it seemed like, you know, they wanted me there and I was good to go and everything. But then like, I don't understand that. Like I have to, I don't understand that at all, frankly, because people live in different ways. And I talked to them about leases and they'll even go like month to month it's going to cost you more but I could actually take and plunk down three if they, they also do three month leases or yearly leases and of course you know year, year lease is the cheapest or whatever but I could actually take my savings and uh, not drain my savings and throw down a three month lease and pay it ahead of time so there might still be a way around there that I could get in there it's going to be really hard to find an apartment set up where I don't have people living above me or below me. Because that's just the way apartments work, you know, generally speaking. Is, um, you know, they're multi-level. So, I'm very upset about that. That's why I'm on here. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, yeah. Now... It doesn't make any sense also because when I moved in here, I'm going to talk about um, two and a half times income versus rent. I had to pay $425 rent and I was only getting uh, $753 Social Security. In other words, I had to pay, I had, um, what is it? It's yeah, I haven't slept well. That's like $350 that I have to pay everything out of. You know, whatever. Internet, uh, electric, all my food, because I wasn't getting any food assistance at the time. And I survived, and I made my rent. You know, it wasn't fun. And then, um, I remember I got, uh, I like I had a bunch of savings and I went through my savings, you know, because it's just it, I just didn't have I didn't have enough money to live on because food's expensive. But I'm I'm getting like a food. My food's like paid for now because I'm eligible for it. Um, so I did run through my savings, but then I found out that I could get um Obama got it to be president or whatever, and the food stamp regulations changed because before I would get like 23 or 28 dollars in food stamps so I didn't bother to apply you know so I didn't I was like I said 425 rent 753 income and um no assistance and that all my food all my uh household um goods soap 
detergent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything had to come out of that three hundred odd dollars that was left over. And I still survived, and I still got never fucked up on the rent. Always made the rent. So this is just poorism. I do not approve of it. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. I don't have a car. I don't have any car payments to worry about. Uh, none of my hobbies are expensive. You know, I'm upstanding, upstanding citizen. Never fucked up on the rent here. Um, in 10 years, I never fucked up on the rent anywhere. For like, uh, I've been renting since I was in my early 20s. And um, the rent always comes first. Always and then I deal with whatever I got left over. So, but it says like in black and white, and it's like uh, you have three options. It said I, I would read it to you if I want, if I wanted to mess with minimizing the uh, screen and pulling up the document. But the one option was like uh, proof that you have a, a greater amount of income. And there was a second option I don't remember that was irrelevant. And then the third option was. Do not live here. <laughs> so, it's like, what the fuck? Uh, like, I'm really upset about it. Because, um, I just want to get out of here. You know, I had to listen to another day of, uh, uh, dog howling theater. Upstairs. I hate it here. This place is falling apart. It's going to need repair. Uh, the roaches have been living in the, uh, in the bathroom here lately. And, of course, I got the uh, poisonous relationship with the landlord. Um, so, you know. And they had apartments coming open on May 1st. And then they have a, that's a two-bedroom. And then they have a one-bedroom coming up open on uh, May 17th. And they have another um, two-bedroom apartment that was open. I didn't ask about studio apartments. Even the, stu it, I think the apartments start at 570, so if you take 570 and you add it, I, mean, I would need the paper, but that's 1140. And then, I still wouldn't, I still wouldn't be able to, even their cheapest apartment, according to this stupid rule, I still wouldn't be able to afford. Um, so, very upset about that. I was like, finally, this is ideal for me. You know, there's nothing but woods around there. There's quiet, plenty of greenery. Um, you're going to make me pay $30 rent for the cat a month. And then a non-refundable deposit of $250 for um, having a cat. In other words, if the cat dies in a month, you still don't get your money back. Um, and if you move and the place is still in good condition and your cat didn't claw the shit out of everything, it doesn't matter. You don't, it's non-refundable. And then like, you got to pay an additional $18 a month if you don't have rental insurance. And there was a couple other like little tiny fees that they threw in there. But, uh, the two bedroom would cost me, um, $863 and the, the one bedroom would cost me like $750. But it doesn't matter with the stupid two and a half times rule. You know, because if it's two and a half times, even if I get the one bedroom, we'll round it down to $700. Uh, that comes out to needing an income that's $500 more than my present income. But I don't understand my lifestyle, my expenses, the fact that I'm getting a... a food allotments so I don't have to spend money on food. I won't have any problem making the rent. I wouldn't have any problem making the rent if it was $900 because all I would pay for would be uh, electric and uh, my internet. I don't, that's it. Um, like I said, all my hobbies they don't take any money. So this is a stupid elitist rich person rule it makes me very angry I don't I'm not really a likable guy you know as far as like uh, I cannot pretend to you know I don't want to call her up and talk to her about it 
So I might have this agent guy, that's his job, placing people at various places, talk to her for me. But I talked to her yesterday for like, like I said, like a half hour, and uh, covered all the bases. But she did not mention anything about, like, I have to be rich to live there. And, uh, you know, comparatively rich. In other words, you know, a poor person can't, is not allowed to live there, even if they're a responsible per, poor person that never misses their rent ever in 30 years. Never, don't have a criminal record. And my credit will work against me because I don't have positive credit. Um, I have like one little tiny blemish on my credit which is like 70 you know, it's, I think it's for a, a bill for $147, but I could have settled it for half of that. And I just, just didn't on principle, because man, fuck them people charging me money. I mean, what sense does that make anyway, to have somebody put you in a uh, uh, debt collector agency, and then you're still using their service and paying faithfully every month? In other words, like, uh, I, I owe AT and T money enough to where they they think I'm responsible for it and put me in a debt collector, but I'm still one of their valued customers. You know, so yeah, this is all very upsetting to me, and uh, I took I took a double dose of volume, and hopefully I can get back to sleep here. Uh, because like I said, I didn't read it yesterday. I was just like, uh, done deal good conversation with the lady I never expected there was any kind of rule like that like uh, you know, to keep poor scum out of uh, I guess I don't get it like I, like I can actually I, I think I might have I, I have to reread the, uh, the lease information they sent me but I mean there's if they have offer three month leases I can just like here here's the money ahead of time no loss to your company let me live there for three months. And, um, you know, another thing is that's funny is they don't accept um, cash payment in any form. So I have to put, like, I have um, $2,300 plus and, like, wrapped up in a mobster roll of cash in the uh, stashed in the bottom of an oatmeal container in the building here and I have to put that all back in the bank but the main thing I have to do is talk to the uh, the more experienced guy who's kind of it's kind of his job to help people find places to live and uh, you know let him do the talking for me because he won't get angry I will get angry because this is bullshit you know this is bullshit not fair um, it's like throwing everybody into one big box like uh, not everybody doesn't know how to live within their means I know how to live within my means I survived here like I said on uh, about $325 to pay for food to pay for entertainment to pay for internet to pay for electric to pay for everything and I survived and I made my rent here on that and I'll have more money left over living there. And I'll have food assistance. And I'll probably even get more food stamps. Which I will, uh, you know, I will um, do that street thing that people do that you pro I probably don't want to say publicly. Uh, um, I will buy gifts of food for people with that, with that extra uh, food stamps and they will feel kindly in return and help me out with things let's put it that way you know what I'm saying um, but I don't even need that you know um, ooh, man it's just ugh. it's finding that I shouldn't have read that at midnight because I was like I can read this lease and see like uh, how complicated it is because uh, she sent the lease through me and it through the uh, it, to my email and um, also there's like a forty dollar application fee you know it's a big company and they're just they soak you this way and that way every which way they can 
but I'd asked her like the total cost for me living there, you know, and it's eight hundred and sixty three dollars for a two bedroom. And um like like I've been poor poor. I mean ain't no ain't no thing to me. As far as like not having a lot of disposable income. I've been living poor poor here for uh since um when I start saving money around September. That's why I have a huge savings that where I can actually just like hey, do you waive that uh uh stupid rule if I just like throw down three hundred and thirty five hundred dollars cash and just pay my whole lease at a time which I don't even think it would be that much. I mean I didn't sit down and do the math. But um you're talking about a deposit and then you're talking about a cat deposit which is extra. So then you're talking about um, $2,600 in rent. I could still do it. I could still like pay it all ahead of time just to get me in there. Just to, um, you know, get, get my foot in the door. That's where I want to live. I mean, there's not too many setups like that apartment wise. Like I said, where you have nobody living above you and nobody living below you and it's all rustic and out in the woods. They don't have one deer crossing sign. They have two. And um, I really want to live there. But it might not be an option. But I uh, texted the um, application form to the real estate agent guy that works through Coleman. And um, I didn't hear nothing from him yesterday. And I wrote him a, a text and I didn't hear nothing from him yesterday. So hopefully these two volume are put me to sleep and mellow me out. And then uh, um, I can do that in the morning. Ain't that a kick in the ass though, man. I never thought there was such a thing as poorism. I thought, you know, like kids just made fun of you because you didn't have the latest tennis shoes. I didn't know it carried over into adulthood. I don't spend any money on clothes. I don't give a fuck about clothes. How often do you see me wearing fancy silk shirts? You know, it's like, I'm not like other people. Uh, you can't put me in the box with other poor people. You know. And it's like, it's poorism. It's not right. Um, I can look at it philosophically and be like, well, I could move in there and it wouldn't be right for me anyway, but all the, I mean, it checks off all my boxes and then some, it's rural, relatively speaking. Um, the, uh, she said that it has a double concrete buffer between apartments you know, she says it's built that way. Like, there'll be nobody above me. There'll be nobody below me. I have my own entrance. And don't share a hallway. Everybody pretty much keeps themselves. Um, the noise complaints that they do get. And what else would she say? Uh, is, uh, they have to be pretty extreme. Because the noise is, uh, you know, muffled. Because it's built for apartments. And there's nobody above you and nobody below you. And then they have a double concrete buffer between, you know, the walls. Um, I'm just making this longer than it has to be, waiting for the volume to kick in. It's I just never encountered nothing like this, you know, where it's poorism. I'm on disability, damn it. I didn't choose to be poor. Uh, I mean, I fell over ass first into the refrigerator trying to lift up a scoop. A scooter that weighed about 250 pounds yesterday, which I managed to do, even from a sitting position, just jockeying it over. You know, just barely lifting it off the ground and jockeying it over. I'm not your average dude in any way, shape, or form. You can't throw me in a box with uh, people just because I have a certain amount of money. Just the same way as you cannot throw me in a box because I only have a nine and a half grade education. I've taught many, many people who spent uh, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars on college that fact 
through a debate. He's like, you do not want to fuck with me intellectually. You know, it's like, yeah. Mm. It's, it, it's making me very angry. It's not good for me to be angry. But yeah, yeah. So I guess I gotta put all that money back in the bank. Since, uh, well, first, I, first thing first, I gotta talk to the uh, Brent guy and see if he can be my mouthpiece and explain my situation. And I'll talk it out with him first because I cannot talk to the, that woman again and, and be all nice and uh, chatty because I'm not a phony guy. I'm not real good at it. I can play nice for a while, but I'm not really good at it. And I, I'm pissed off. And uh, it's bullshit. This rule is bullshit that I have to, I have to have, two time, two point five times the income. Of of the rent. And like, what kind of fucking rule is that? You know, it's like I don't have any car payments. I don't have any. Uh, uh, Expensive girlfriends I have to keep happy and buy jewelry for. You know, it's like... Ugh. So yeah, I don't really have much much else to talk about. But I'm just, I'm just stewing. I'm just very angry and I know that calling her back tomorrow would be a very bad idea. Because uh, anything I say will be wrong. And I won't be able to play nice. Because it is. It's, it's poorism. It's, it's a form of racism. It's, it's classism. You could call it if you don't want to call it poorism. But it's really really about like... Um, uh, you can't really afford this place. It's No, I couldn't afford the place if I had a different lifestyle. But... I'm not gonna sit there and explain my whole life to this bitch, and um, you know it's like like I'm not like other. It's, what what am I gonna do? I want to sound like a damned idiot, you know? It's like like listen, I don't got no life, that therefore I don't got any expenses. My hobbies don't cost me anything. I don't have any drug habits. I have to support. Uh, I get assistance on food, so I don't even have to pay for food. You know, it's like what the fuck am I gonna tell him? I'm not gonna tell him all that shit. I'm not going to tell her all that shit, you know, uh, over this bullshit rule. So I just talked to the uh, uh, Brent guy and see if uh, I said his name again. I just should give up on that. And, uh, you know, see what he thinks. I mean, there's other places to live that don't have that kind of a rule, but that's the place I want to live, you know. Uh,. I don't want to do any more searching. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. They have a place opening on May 1st if all goes well. The application part of it, she said, is it's actually, uh, it takes no less than a week. Or it takes less than a week for that to even, they, she says they process those applications really quickly. So, um, I was thinking like, I'll snag that. I said. I said. I just want to. I told her. I just want to snag the first apart available apartment because I went out of here. I explained to her the situation. And I said it's not fun listening to a dog howl above you at eight o'clock in the morning. Um. So there'll be. You know. I like the idea of nobody living above me. You know. And she's doing her professional, personable. You know, personality type thing. You gotta have like a. You know, you gotta have that professional personality of uh, being pleasant and whatnot. And, um, you know, but she seemed like, uh, well, seemed like everything was green lighted and good to go. She didn't mention, she didn't bother to mention to me that uh, this crazy rule. So, in other words, like, if you paid a thousand dollars rent, you would have to make at least $3,500 to live there. 
so you would have to have um, $2,500 income to live on, which I've never ever had in my life. I'm, I'm going to be paying like eight sixty, and then I'll be, you know, I'll have $400 left over. And, um, if, I don't know. It's very upsetting. I don't know if I did anything to my feet either when I fell. If I banged my feet on anything or anything like that, I just felt, felt my ass hit the refrigerator and felt that, you know, that lightning bolt shock you get up your spine. If you hit your tail, tailbone a certain way. And I was like, God, that, that was a hard hit. Um, and not unexpected because I wasn't in a, because it's a cramped area there, I wasn't in a position where I could lift in a sensible way and I shouldn't be, you know, I, I, I'll fall across the floor just walking regularly, let alone trying to lift 250 pounds. So, you know, I was just like scooching it over. So I could angle it around that table and then turn the wheel, get it out of the bedroom and then turn the wheel toward the living room and get in the living room. Because uh, I have to have it ready for when, uh, whenever my friend has time to do this. He will do it. He said he'd do it. So he will. that's one thing about my brother and my friend is like when they say they'll do something, they will do it. And that is, that makes up for a lot of other flaws in, in a human being is uh if their word is good you know um that's after you know a person though so you can't go to a company and say like uh i i don't save all my receipts but maybe i should like saved all my receipts after 30 years and uh i had a uh my brother-in-law wiz actually did that where he has saved all his receipts and uh, showed it to somebody in, in some sort of uh, banking or professional capacity. And they were like, you're the first person i ever seen do this. But I, I should have saved like all my receipts from um, all my rental history. And just like, boom, you know, going. The office might be opening on May 1st because Ohio is opening up from the COVID thing. And be like never missed my rent here's all my receipts you know you want me as a renter um I, I don't have for one thing i don't have enough energy or a fight left in me or health to cause much trouble uh or much vitality <laughs> so uh even when I was living on 422 a month and paying 225, I still wouldn't have met their criteria. You know, I, I was I was like I had 422 a month and I started out paying 225. That was my cheapest rent, and uh, 225 plus 225 is 450. And that's already without the other half. That's already like two times without the uh, 2.5 times thing. That's been my whole life. I've never had a situation where I had was paying rent and had uh, 2.5 times what my rent was to live on. So, it's just, it just blew me away. But, I'm being redundant. I'm just kind of waiting to mellow out because I'm very angry. I was very excited about moving there and then finally got through to somebody and had a good conversation with him. Got all the information I need. Got more information about how the place is set up. And um, they do soak you with fees, but they tend to do that. You know, $40 application fee. They make you pay a one, the one time the pet, pet deposit. You got to pay rent for an animal. You know, $30 rent for the cat. It's $25 for the rent for the cat here. So that's just kind of standard policy. You know, that, that landlord thing, being a landlord is a big pain in the ass. So you know there's a lot of money in it. It's very lucrative. You know, so, um, yeah, it's just kind of standard for them to uh, 
squeeze every last drop they can and get out of you this way and that way. Like, you know, you have to have renter's insurance to live here. Which is another dumb rule. It's like, if my shit gets stole, my shit gets stole. I mean, unless they're talking about me, like, burning the place down. And, uh, I don't know if my renter's insurance would cause me burning down the guys next to the, uh, next to me's place. I don't, I don't think it works that way. I don't know. I've never had renter's insurance. Never had any problems. But they they're say you only got to pay $18 a, a month extra if you don't have renter's insurance. But, uh, yeah, I might, like I said, I'll get the other guy to talk for me and talk to him about it. And uh, I'm not going to give up hope, but it doesn't look likely now. Then I'll get to live there. Um, I don't understand. I don't understand the world. I don't understand people. I guess I'm too isolated and my nose has been very itchy lately. That's why I can't help doing the bewitch thing. But I'm going to get off of here. I thought I'd share that news with you. And uh, this will be my video for today. Even though it's... Uh, very early in the day. I could say it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to try to go back to sleep. And uh, think happy thoughts. Or think those sour grape thoughts. Like, um, eh, that place wouldn't have been that great anyway. Those grapes weren't sweet. Um, I know different though. Place would, have been, place would be ideal for me. So, there's a 36 minute video that should have been 10 minutes. But it's just me killing time, waiting for the uh, dope to kick in so I can go back to sleep. And uh, mellow out. I'm going to get off here so I can do rude things to my nose. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you uh, on the 23rd. If today is indeed the 22nd, I don't even fucking know. So, uh, hopefully... You do not see this until much later in the day, and you've had a good night's sleep if you're in the eastern time zone of uh, North America. If you're seeing this at other times, forget all that. So, um, goodbye. Godspeed. All that stuff.